Good assessment and evaluation strategies start with understanding the difference between assessment and evaluation. Assessment is the process of gathering data about student performance using various tools like teacher observations, activities, or quizzes to capture what students know and understand. While evaluation is the process of actually making a judgment about the meaning of the data gathered. Evaluations can direct what happens next in the lesson or instructional sequence and can also inform students of their progress. These two types of evaluations are formative. The third type of evaluation is summative, where student progress and mastery is formally judged. So let's look at strategies. In order to make good judgments about our students' success and instructional decisions, we need to have solid assessment and evaluation practices. And that begins with establishing clear learning goals. This allows us to prepare lessons in advance that align with and support those goals, and leads to fair and valid assessments. Good assessment and evaluation also includes identifying the student level of mastery even before instruction begins. This allows us to reliably capture what students have done well and what needs to be improved based on the level of mastery we are seeking. But how do we do this? There are many tools we can use to help assess student progress towards the learning goals, like general observation of student behavior and work, observation checklists during a particular activity, or any completed student work. And involving the students in creating the goals and monitoring their own progress helps improve learner autonomy. We can extend this autonomy by giving students various choices when they get closer to formal evaluation points. Other ways to support students are by adapting the tasks or scoring tools and by giving thoughtful attention to student feedback about their own work. This helps us identify students' strengths and weaknesses and better plan for success. All of these strategies, when incorporated into our daily routine, help students progress academically and motivates them to learn. So when it comes time to evaluate, students are set up to demonstrate their gained skills to the best of their abilities. And being involved in the assessment process lets the students know that their outcomes are the result of their efforts. All students benefit from this, but especially students who have difficulty monitoring their own thinking and or focusing attention on tasks. Assessment and evaluation strategies help provide these students with the structure they need. But what does it look like in the class? Mrs. Jean's grade 8 core French class is working in small groups writing newspaper articles. Before the students start the assignment, Mrs. Jean shares the expectation for the task so the students have the opportunity to identify criteria for success. Mrs. Jean works with her students to develop the lesson goals and determine the criteria for a good news article. The students also give input on how long the article should be, how long they have to work on it, and stylistic elements that must be included. Mrs. Jean uses this strategy of co-planning because she finds students demonstrate a deeper understanding of what the expectations are and how to plan to meet these expectations. As the students progress with the assignment, Mrs. Jean encourages autonomy by providing students with time and suggestions so they can determine where they are and how they can progress. And she encourages self-assessment to ensure the best student performance possible. Paul and Mary are students with individual education plans for language. Mrs. Jean adapts the expectations for the assignment for these two students, shortening the required length so they can better meet the timelines. Paul and Mary are still given the same amount of time to work on the assignment, but are required to produce less. After the draft articles have been collected, Mrs. Jean gives each student individualized feedback in order to help them plan for improvement. Good evaluation and assessment strategies allow teachers to better plan for success, encourage student autonomy, and ensure the best student performance outcomes possible. And that's good for everybody.